Hello, hello, oh, all right, all right, we're back, we're back. Sorry about that, I just killed the stream. You thought your phone messed up? Yeah, what happened? So anyways, I was checking out Zyanger's game there. Zyanger, that was cool, man. Sorry, I, I didn't catch what I was trying to say on there, but I was impressed, dude. I like what you're creating here with this observatory. Um, I was having fun there. I was creating the planet and stuff like that and creating, doing the random ones. And uh, I was just saying, what are, you, what are your plans for it? What are you going to do with this? I'd love to see more of it. It's pretty cool. So there's that countdown, this countdown. Um, oh, already on the stream, I fixed one bug already. And I was earlier, I was talking about how great it is to have so many bugs fixed. I think I think it's up in the thousands now. Thousands of bugs that have been fixed for Song Ringer. Crazy amount. But it's starting to make the game feel really smooth and pro and like polished and stuff. And that is a good thing for your experience as a player because it doesn't, it means that as a player, you can just experience it and not be taken away from the magic by some stupid, silly bug. Nothing? You're working on a nuclear throne game? Cool. Awesome, man. I like it. I really like it. It was cool. It was very, like, creative and stuff. Very, very... It made me feel like a creator. I was like, sweet. I'm creating a whole planet here. All right, so here's where you get in, and they do this comment. So basically, we would just take this one out. This is brain 1A. How come these are different Zs? What the heck is Tower Rising 1C? Oh, they're losing the moorings? Oh, okay, 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 okay. That one does need a countdown. So this is a fallback, this is a fallback story element if somehow the player is on the top of the tower and they have quantity ending three, it's meant to do that. So that should be a NIMS countdown. Same thing, all these should be 180. And then the tower brain one, once you're inside the tower brain pattern, you're about to end the game. That's where it shouldn't restart the countdown counter. So, all right, we got Smith join. Wait. All right, so ship falling 1B. This is after you beat the boss. Set the countdown to three minutes. Three minutes to beat the game once you beat the final boss. That should be plenty of time. It takes the player about 60 seconds to walk the distance they need to go. And then you got two minutes left to solve the tiny puzzle. Or else. Or else. Okay, meditate start. It kills the tent countdown timer so you don't die. That should definitely remain. But other than that, we got them all covered. Should be. So let's check this out. We're going to beat the final boss. Make sure the countdown sequence still works. I need my headphones. These other ones. I 
think what killed the stream earlier was that the, those other ones have a little recording device or whatever. Let's plug in the regular ass headphones. There we go. Hey, wait, oh shoot, did I screw up the stream again? Hopefully that didn't. I don't, I don't want to restart again. Yes, we still have audio. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Yes, I have been watching tons of the summer games on Quick. I've been tuning in a lot. Um, I saw a little bit of a lot of things. I saw like Neil's Automata or Near Automata, like a Kirby game I'd never seen. Um, like, yeah, a bunch of little ones. I really, I wish I could have seen this Metroid live. When is Metroid? I heard I Am Bread was really cool. So there'll be some of them I'll catch on the YouTube later. What about you, man? You caught some cool ones? What's you been liking the GDQs? Okay, where? We got we beat the boss, here's the story element, we got a timer going, we got three minutes. If I walk straight there, even walking slowly, I get there in like 30 seconds. 15 even. So having three minutes should be plenty of time to beat the game here. So now we still have two and a half minutes left to do this bit. Oh, Diablo 2? Sweet. Cool. That'd be a fun one to watch too. Because I've played it a lot. I love that game. I know this one in and out. It'd be sweet to see it. Speed Rand. Oh, Brothers? Cool. Oh, yeah, that's one I've been meaning to watch anyways. That's like one of those games where it seems like a real instant classic. Okay, so what should I test first? Um, let's test living. Let's make sure that this... Let's see if the end triggers correctly. Okay, yeah, it turned off our timer. If we let the time this all this play out and fast forward, everything's fine. Let's make sure it goes all the way to the end though. Cool. Yeah, alright, cool. Okay, good ending works, or I mean the regular ending works. Let's make make it now so the player dies and see make sure that doesn't break anything. Oh, on Saturday? Cool. Yeah, last I saw, they were already up to like 500,000 raised for charity, too. That's pretty cool. Oops. Okay, trying again this time. This time I'm going to die. Amazon normal? Oh, cool. I don't know if I ever... Yeah, I played the Amazon. Amazon is a cool one. I love the Necromancer. That was a sweet one to play. Okay, so let's say I get in here in the last room. And the timer runs out. Let's turn up the time so it just runs out fast. Alright, what happens? What happens? Running around, doing stuff. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I want to continue. Okay, it puts me back here. But I kill the boss. I think this is the next bug here in this little set of bugs. If I 
kill him again after dying. I think this is where the game it won't allow you to beat it somehow. So I'm checking it out. What's going wrong here? It might be that the ending is already set to a certain quantity. Okay, so we got the timer. Go into this room. How long do I think it'll take to run speed songbringer? That's such a good quest great question. You think in twenty minutes? That's a pretty that's pretty um that would be amazing to see. Um okay, so I've been thinking about this a lot because I've been playing the game um fast a lot. I mean, I've been trying to start playing faster. I'm I'm one of those players that tr is such a completionist that I still go and like activate all the spirit pillars and explore all the dungeons and everything. So, but I'm finally starting to, to get to know a certain world good enough that I can speedrun it. So the hard part about speedrunning Songbringer is going to be beating the final dungeon and the final boss because the final boss is like crazy hard, has tons of hit points, he has three different phases, it's an incredibly difficult fight, um, and it helps to have a lot of items. Yeah, I know, right? It, but but speedrunners are freaking amazing. I don't know how I don't know how they're gonna do it. Like I, I'm having trouble beating the game without the sword. The last boss is like incredibly hard, and without the without the sword, it's just like it's ridiculous. So you you got to be freaking on top of your game to beat them, beat these bosses really fast. But that said. If you can, if you can get past the difficulty of beating a boss somehow, um, there you can pretty much beat Songbringer really fast because you don't have to do all the dungeons. You don't have to be, do any of the. Well, let's think. You would have to really get the the killer bombs, which can be bought. So as long as you found the bombs, so you'd have to do at least like one or two dungeons. Um, you do the first dungeon to get at least the bombs. Um, or buy them. I guess you could buy them. If you got lucky, you could find enough diamonds on the overworld and then buy them in a store. So I guess you wouldn't even have to do Dungeon 1. Um, but you would probably want at least a blink. No, I guess... Yeah, yeah, to beat the final boss, I'm pretty sure you would want the blink. So Dungeon 1 is pretty much... You're probably going to have to do it. And then Dungeon 2, you probably should do it because you can get the, you can get the lighter... And cactuses, which are really going to help. The lighter is going to help you find more diamonds, which can allow you to buy the kill bombs. And buying the kill bombs can allow you to skip the Songbringer dungeon. So basically, you could get you could beat Songbringer by only completing like two or three dungeons, maybe even like the last dungeon. Actually, yes, if you started with World Seed Vel, you start with Vel, so you could just go straight into the dungeon. If you're somehow super duper badass, you could beat the, the last boss with only three hearts and like the sword, nothing else. You could literally beat Songbringer in like 20 minutes. Yeah, right, I love those too. Just completely break everything. I've always thought about adding adding glitches in like that where it's like a player could somehow glitch into the last level, but I, I don't know, it's kind of, I think as a player, it's probably more satisfying to find those, you know, and I like that even though I'm fixing all these crazy amounts of bugs, like there will be someone that finds some crazy cool glitch that still allows you to, to get <laughs> to, to access some area you're not supposed to. I'm excited to see that happen. Okay. Apparently the countdown didn't start. 
or what? Maybe it was because of the changes I already made. So if I turn off all these changes, I'm just going to git stash run again. Right, exactly. Yeah. I'm not going to purposefully add glitches. Y'all are going to have to find your own glitches, damn it. But with a game like this, there's there's pretty much glitches to be found, I'm sure. We're still finding bugs. I mean, it's like still finding bugs to this day. It's like I thought I thought a thousand bugs ago we'd be close, but I mean, I guess it feels closer now, but still, there's more bugs being found. That's what I'm trying to say. The bugs are endless. Gotta come to grips with that. As a developer, like shit, bugs are endless. Okay, so here's the old way where it only gave you a minute to get downstairs. And it didn't restart. Well, it restarts this time right here. Okay, so we let the timer run out. Continue. Back in the boss fight, things don't seem like they are any different. Is it because I'm cheating to beat him? going. Timer restarts just fine. Everything is fine. If I die again, I'll die, I'll die by hurting myself this time. Maybe that was a thing. Maybe I had to actually get hurt. No. I don't know, I guess I need more information about this bug that got reported, because it's not, I'm not being able to reproduce it. But, I can at least confirm the other part. Countdown restart. Yeah, everything's fine here. But run straight there. Ah, yeah. Doesn't change anything. Okay, I don't know what. I don't know what how that was. All right, so let's get stash pop. And check my diff here. Still falling 1B, 1C, and rising 1D. I want to go through each one of these little changes and make sure. Okay, so still falling 1B. This happens if you've defeated the final boss. Oh, this is after you defeat the final boss. You gain ship fall one. Gives you the countdown. Okay, ship falling one C. I think this is where if you have saved somehow with ship fall two. Oh 
Oh no, this is Captain Tusk. Oh, I'm editing the wrong stuff here. This is not what we need to be changing. Ship falling 1C, 1... Yeah, those are... Leave those alone. Oh. Okay, good thing I checked that. Alright, now we got Tower Rising and Tower Brain. That's better. Yeah, Tower Rising is if you've completed... Flag's boss is complete. Yeah, here's where we go. Segway to the Tower Brain. Run 1A. You start the scene Tower Rising 1C. Uh, this one gives you one ending two. Is there some way that this set of story elements could not have gotten cleared? It would load it loads your game. Hmm, I wonder if story system... I think there's a clear method. Timer, story data clear, actions, status, dialogue, lines, all this stuff gets cleared. Does it need to be shrunk too? Oh. Oh, okay, wait, hold on. We need to start from a, a proper save point, too. And maybe need, even need to do this in release mode. Okay. That's a really good point. Because maybe the player started at the right, at the save point, and that just changes everything. That's 0, zero 99. Okay, but back to just reviewing this change here. Tower Rising 1D. It's just a NIM countdown. 180 instead of doing it twice. Tower Rising 1C. We've got to move. Both these are no saves. Oh, is there somehow a way the story, maybe the story actions could get piled up on top of each other so that it doesn't run? Like, is there some way that it could have a delay or some other story element running? What was the bug again? What was the actual wording? Countdown doesn't kill you after beating Metatron twice. Hmm.
if I just let the countdown rot die up there? Maybe that's what they did. Countdown started flying. Let's see if we just die. What if we die right here? Which will song will be a launch of about sixteen dollars or so. Well, I guess I need more information about this one. But this bug's this first one's fixed. The quantity of the ending of the, the timer and whatever. Oh, I guess there's one other safety one. Is there? Wait. Is... Oh, I think I got rid of that one. Oh, it's at the end. Oh, no, it's right here. This one is a blanket. It works for all Z9 plus 4 is complete. Quantity ending 3, no save. Okay, what if some somehow the player gets ending corny two already in their save file? Because if I go downstairs. Okay, nothing. Okay, so somehow their save, it saved the ending quantity. Why are the shadows casting into the sky now? That's a bug.
Ah, okay, so there, you can't trigger the ending of the game. Okay, so we can fix that. This situation, it somehow loads the game with an ending variable. Let's just solve that right there at the root by making it so, so there's already a safeguard and well I guess this first bit can be checked in first so let's check that in. Alright, this next bit. I don't know how their save games did that. That's kind of something I should research, actually. Yeah, Cartridge, totally. Yeah, it's a pretty cool website. There's actually a, a, a game component or gear component, load equipment and load. So here's load. So load should just never ever load the ending. And see, I think save. There, see, save skips the ending. Or at least it's meant to. How would it... How would it get past this? How would... How would this player have ever experienced that, where the game actually saved the ending? Unless maybe the player's gear component didn't get destroyed. No, that couldn't be it. Anyways, after we've loaded, we clamp. It's discount ending. Still so curious, how would they have gotten past that? Hmm. Well, okay, let's try this now. So I should still have ending in my, yeah, it's right there in my save file. But it should not shouldn't allow So now if I saved and quitted, how did you not hear about that before? I don't know. I saved, but it didn't change the ending. Oh. 
Maybe that's how it works. So if you don't even have it in your equipment, but somehow it gets in your save file. I think if I set it to blank, it will erase it. Yeah, tree.clear, sign a sibling. Okay, that should get rid of it. Okay, so we're making sure the ending is never saved. I'll get item key for K item ending. Okay, so if I just go into the game, it should load the fact that I have ending two somehow in my save data. But if I save again, right here, and just quit the game, it should, yeah, cool, got rid of ending. Nice. Good, 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 good. Okay, there. So we've got two safeguards in place. One of them, make sure that the ending is definitely never saved. If it ever did, somehow, it gets rid of it. And then it also makes sure it's never loaded. So if it ever tries to load it, gets rid of it. Should I worry any more about this? I'm still really curious about how they how their save file actually got it to save that because the save function here loops over all item types. And if it's the ending it just continues. Oh okay so it had to have gotten there's Set save game key val had to have been called for items not ending. For item ending, what? This is the only place I think in the entire game. Oh, I think I know what it is. Okay, Double Eleven has their own debug commands, and one of them is this bit of code that loops over all items and grants them all to the player. And obviously what was happening, or what could have been happening there, is that it was actually granting the ending item to the player, like as a cheat, basically. And then this save function was not smart enough to erase that. So now that does has this right here where it actually makes sure and never save it and also never load it. We should not be getting into this situation again. And I think that would only happen in a double for their situation because they had this blanket just setting every single item to some quantity. So 
let's play through this a couple more times just to make sure that everything is still kind of playing as intended. So we'll like, you know, beat the boss once and die and try and beat the boss again. Okay, my satis my curiosity is satisfied now. The shadows. Oh, because I'm in this other shadow mode. I'm like, why are the shadows all weird today? Because there was no... Okay. Because I wasn't in awesome graphics mode. Okay, we got a three-minute timer to beat the game. Let's run over here. Let the timer run out. Nothing, nothing's different. Well, my my version of the game, the Steam version, wouldn't have had this bug anyways. It's kind of a real edge case where I think one of the cheat codes actually was messing with the save data. But at least now there's this blanket thing. This is actually a good thing to do because maybe the player somehow tried to cheat and they added the ending value to their save file, which shouldn't be possible once the, once the game's out. It'll have like a little compression algorithm or something there. But anyways, if the player somehow right now in the beta try to play the game with the ending quantity of two, it wouldn't have been possible to beat the game. So there you go. Now it's even more bulletproof. And everything's cool. The timer still ran. Okay, I'm happy with this. <laughs> nice. Whoops. Okay, let's get this checked in. What's up, Ryu So, Suo? Thanks, man. How's your day going? Hello and welcome. All right, check it in. All right, well, I think I got time for one more bug. Today's stream. I think I can get one more in me. Yeah, I'm great, man. Really great. I'm making my dream game. I'm playing my dream game. I'm almost finished with my this game, Songbringer. I've been working on it for three years. I'm excited. I'm really excited to finally finish this game and get it out, get it out to players. And I'm happy with how it's all turning out. I've been playing it like every single night lately, and I'm very happy with how how the game plays. 
Thank you, Red Saint. Okay, so this 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 bug right here, this is where flasks take up separate item slots. Nice, nice. So if you have two flasks, they both take up an X, uh, separate slots in your items. Oh, you're like, yay, there's people chatting now. Oh yeah, you found my Coco Sudi X tutorial? But you knew of me from the streams or something before? That's crazy. Yeah, so I used to make tutorials and stuff, like from 2010 to like 2013, I was making tutorials for Cocos 2D first, actually, before Cocos 2D X was big, I was making it for Cocos 2D iPhone, like making these like game dev kits and then selling them, I'd like sell my kits for like 50 bucks or like 100 bucks, you know, here's the, here's the, ba the bare bones for a game. And I was trying to teach people how to make games and stuff. And I finally confronted my fears in 2013 and 14. Because after that business started dying, like everybody else started making cook tutorials too. And selling game kits and stuff. Either that or it just wasn't my thing. I finally realized I am, I am doing this out of fear. I am actually continuing to make game tutorials because I'm afraid that I won't succeed as a game developer making my own games. And that was a real, uh, an honest moment for me. I had to get real with that. And that's why I, just, I titled every single file in Songbringer. Um, everything starts with the word courage. Because it took a lot of courage to, like, um, to get over that fear. I was like, there's no way my video games are ever going to succeed. No one's ever going to buy them. It was this belief I think I got put into me by my grandfather, or at least my grandfather's side of the family. Where they're really like um, business, 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 business. You know, business is the only way to make money. Games aren't going to make money. Music especially isn't going to make money. And for, you know, 10 years of my life, I was trying to make music and make a living at it. And it, none of that ever worked for me because I think of my own beliefs, right? My own belief system. That's why I always talk about beliefs a lot and I get on rants and stuff like I am right now. But anyways, anyways, it taught me a huge lesson in my life when I finally realized that I was doing, I was doing that out of fear and I wasn't doing the thing that I really wanted to do just because I was afraid. And I finally realized, what would I do if I wasn't afraid? I would make a video game, you know, I would make an actual video game and that's what happened, man. Songbringer happened. Pas I get passionate thinking about it. Anyways, I would like to share any kind of courage I have with all y'all. Make make those hard choices in your life. Confront your fears. You know what I mean? Confront those fears. Your fears are your friend. Make your fears your friend because they are. They're they're a way of your higher your higher conscious, your subconscious, your higher conscious, your super conscious, whatever you want to call it, communicating with you and trying to tell you, look, you have this fear for a reason. Here, if you deal with this fear, there's a great reward on the other side of this fear for you. Yeah, you're going through that right now? Oh, wow. Oh, cool, man. Wow, I wish you all the courage and, and luck in the world, man. Good for you. That's exciting. Yeah, right on, right on. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to fix a bug again. Fix, this is the last bug I'm going to fix on today's stream. Just make it so the flasks don't take up separate item slots. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Because uh, if it does, I'll have to pause because i got to get some dinner. Um, but anyways, the flasks are currently taking up two item slots. Let's just start the game here on top of the tower again. And we should have two flasks. We got one. That's the empty one. Oh, let's okay. get make these both full. Oh wait, no, these are one. 
Okay, yeah, quantity one for those. So anyways, there'll be two flasks in the inventory and we want there to be one with the quantity number below it. So we got that one, you can equip it separately, right? I could equip either one of these and put them at, even put them at different item slots and stuff. It's kind of tricky the way these work though, so hopefully this doesn't take too long. Encouragement spell? Yes! It's super effective! Yeah! I hope so. Okay, so this is in interfaces. And there's like this get gear function, or maybe it's like count. Get equip gear count. This one get gear equipable. Where's that function? Um, I guess we go to interfaces Steam. Oh, there it is. It's called Get Gear Items. All right, so it loops over all your equipables and then the rest of your items. And it says if you have this item, it's not equipped, and not contains, push it back to count it. Okay, so with this function called has gear item, this one here, this increases the index and the passive count whenever you're going over the item. So what we need to do is make it so when it gets to a flask item, it increases the index beyond the flasks. What's up, Ronald Rowe? How did I decide on a price for the game? Um, well, uh, I basically kind of like thought about it from my perspective as a player, you know? All right, Dom Killer, see you, man. So I had any, I had anywhere in mind like 15 to $20, like what, that's what about Strong Bringer should be. Like as a, if I were paying for it, you know, myself, like what would I pay to play Songbringer? I would, I would probably pay up to $20 for this game. In fact, it's probably worth $20, but, oops, I typed BC Warrior wrong. But when I decided on the price and everything, I was taking a look at um, one of my, I total, totally consider this guy a hero, Tom, Thomas Happ, who makes like Axiom Verge and all that. He priced this game at $20, and I was having this conversation with like a lot of people on the stream back then, like what, what should the price of Songbringer be? And there was like a lot of, lot of chat activity at that point in in that in the streams lifetime. Um, so there's just a lot of people commenting, a lot of chat going on, and people like um, talking about it. And the consensus was that it shouldn't be twenty dollars because that kind of is something that mes makes you hesitate. And that's that's what I did for Axiom Verge. Axiom Verge was like my favorite game of 2015, but it sat in my wish list for a good six months before I ever bought it because it was $20. And it's just something that was just slightly out of that comfort zone where I could easily purchase it and I have no hesitation whatsoever. Like, yes, I'll buy that right now. $20 was kind of at the edge of my zone personally. $15 or something I could be like, yes, easily I can purchase that game right now for $15. So anyways, I tried to get something that makes it so um, it's still priced well enough that it's not devaluing the game. It's not making the game seem like it's it sucks, but yet it's not something just on the high price side where it makes people hesitate. And I don't know, maybe there's some science to it somewhere, but I definitely was going with not science for this approach, more of just feeling it out. Plus, 
$16 is cool because it's a power of two. So there's a lot of power of two usage in Songbringer, and there's also a lot of power of two usage for the Kickstarter. All the Kickstarters were like powers of two, like there was the $8 reward, there was a $16 reward, 32, 64, 128, 256, all the way up to 2048. So that's a good question though, right? If I were trying to price my game right now, I would probably go through the same sort of fumbling process and just asking other people. But I don't know, maybe, maybe there's a better way to do it. Okay, well, the first thing to do is to make it so flasks skip over. So if we have, we're going to make a similar thing to like how these work, where it's checking for multiple different items that are part of the same family, I guess. What the heck? Autocomplete's broken. Yeah, you're building an app. Cool, man. So what's your what's your app? What do you what what's your price range and what do you what are you thinking you're gonna charge for it? There's no is flask. Oh, it's is empty flask or is full flask. Okay, so if it's an if it's a full flask, then we're gonna be K item flask full plus K num flasks. Q equals count What the heck is wrong with autocomplete? I gotta shut down Vim. That's weird. Count full damn it. Your component. I'm having to work around. Yeah, it's just count full flasks, count empty flasks. Count full flasks. All right, we're gonna need another one also for the empty flasks. No idea? It's a team task management app, uh-huh. Oh, tiered, okay. Huh. Huh. Well, what about, are there other apps similar? Well, who's your competition? And what are they charging? Pitlix, what's up, man? How's it going? I haven't seen your name in a while. Okay, empty, empty, empty. All right, we should be able to check this out now. Let's get set a breakpoint there and make sure this is working good. Yeah, it has, right? What you been up to the last? Dang, what's it been? A year? More than a year? It might have been more than a year. Set a breakpoint here. Let's go into a. Uh, mm, 
Now we don't need to go to a small window size. Okay, let's see what happens there. It needs to skip past the flasks and bunch them together, put a quantity underneath them. So I have two flasks, they should be all in the same. You released the game? Wow, congratulations, dude. What's it called? What's the link? Share it, please. Uh-huh, so you're just, it's kind of a new space. There's really not so many competitors. Huh, okay. I don't know. It sounds like you're blazing some new territory. And in that case, sometimes you can kind of start, just charge your own price, you know? Like, start something that's fair for players, for, I mean, for users, but like, um, but still is good for you. Is there a way to do that? I'm sure, I know it's still really hard, though, to price something, man. I, I can relate. Do you have a fault? Like, are there people using it already? Can you ask them what about what they think it should be? I don't know if that's possible or not. Isoformer? Cool. Dude, congratulations. This is sweet. Nice art style. Good job, Pithlix, man. I'm excited for you. Okay, so this is a full flask. We're at item full flask full one. Okay, we need to try it with like flask full two starting and all that. Okay, so the count should be the flask full one plus the world num flasks. That would be three flasks, so that would be one, two, three. Should be the last one, and you increment the count at the end, so that should work. And then Q is how many you totally have, so that's two, good. And then if that's greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to the number of flasks, then the index is the item type of flask full plus two minus one. Should be just one, so flask full two. Okay. Return true. Let's see what's happening here. If it's not equipped, not contains, it becomes a passive item. So it'll push this onto the end, and this should be flash full two. I guess that's, I guess that's right. Hmm. False for not passive. Hmm. Okay. So here's what we got. Oh, okay, so put the flask together but it didn't um it didn't put a quantity but it did put them together there and if i use one oh i don't have i have full health so it's not letting me use it So if I use, oh, I need to kill myself a little bit. Now I can drink the flask. Put myself again. I still have a flask left. Oh, that's weird. I put the flask way over there. I don't know why. That's crazy. We're gonna need to fix that. Drink it again. And now I don't have any more flasks. Things are back to normal here. Okay, so yeah, some things to do here. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you're just trying to create something that's fair for people that are buying it and fair for you. So one way is to ask people. But, like, you really got to – it really helps. I don't know if there's any way – that I don't know if this helps or not, but, like, it really helps to ask people to actually buy and not, like, ask people what they would pay. And I don't know if that – that's really not what I told what I told you I did, you know, with Songbring I basically just asked them what 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 would you pay for this, you know? But I guess in some senses that like doing a Kickstarter was validation, right? That that about that price would work kind of. I mean, Kickstarter is kind of a different environment, but that's what I'm talking about. If you actually ask people to buy, it's a lot more helpful than if you ask them if they would buy or what they would pay if they did buy. I'm probably just confusing the matter. I'm sorry, man. I'll, I'll try and stop talking about it. <laughs> okay, first of all, let's start with the quantity problem. The quantity is not showing beneath the full flask. And it's not being marked as a passive... Well, it's not a passive item. Okay, that's, that's probably a good thing that it's not passive. Oh, that's because of the blink and all that. Oh, it's the displayable quantity. Or no. Yeah, the displayable quantity. Nice, all right, good. Well, yeah, I was just basically trying to like say like, is there some way you can ask people to actually buy your get your product at the price that you're trying to ask and see how many people do buy at that price versus how many people buy at like a cheaper price or whatever and then do the math and find the sweet spot? I don't know if that's that helps at all. Get displayable quantity. Yeah, this is the only place this happens. It's got to happen somewhere else. Where does it actually do this? Get displayable. You see here in game scene. Set item image. Oh, that's for the that's for the HUD. Mm. Interfaces Steam. Aha! Here we go. Create choices. Yeah, I think this is the one. So, okay, we just got to update this function, get displayable quantity. Now, if it's a... Is full flask, then count full flasks. Is empty flask, count empty flasks. Probably need to filter the item type too. In fact, wait, does it already filter the item type? It does not filter the item type already. Probably need to do that here for this to work all good. Special, special one for the filtering the blink type though. Yeah, cool. There we got spirits, quantity two. Okay, if I, whoops. I really need to save the game up to the top. So, P1, um, health lower, something like 20. 24. Wow, it was making me full health because I was at that refill. Okay, so now we got lower health. We're at a place where it's not gonna, I can use the flask right away. 
So, still got a quantity of two. If I equip it, let's go straight back. Yep, it still looks good here in the inventory if I drink one. Go to the inventory. There's this weird thing where it's off of the edge. We'll figure out what the problem is there, but at least it's showing a quantity of one. And, but it's not, it did not update the, um, the HUD. So when I drink the flask, it still shows a quantity of two there. Alright, I'm going to set a breakpoint where it finally checks, where it does this check here. There's nothing, there's nothing previous that's going to get caught on. Alright. Here it's counting the flasks. I clip it. Counts them again. Use it, and I should get another one. Oh, I just never checked the quantity again. But it's supposed to update the, the, the display, so I wonder why it's not. Set item image basically is not getting called. Oh, and so I think it's, is it here in gear component where it calls set item image? This is in gear component increment. This that should work. Refresh HUD, there it is. Refresh the main HUD. Oh, probably because the item image, it's trying to refresh the exact item. That's what's happening. Equip I equals equals item. So the equip in equip item was probably flask two, and yeah, refresh HUD might be something else. All right, let's get it. Set a breakpoint here this time. Turn it off so we can get this set up. So we need the flask equipped. Oh, and then, and then run it with this breakpoint. So when we use it, it should refresh the HUD. Hopefully. It's supposed to do this. Drink the flask. It didn't refresh the HUD. Okay, well that explains it. Explains part of it at least. Why? Wow. Okay, so it's just not calling refresh HUD?
So what happens when I use a bomb, for example? It, should, it updates the the HUD somehow already. Oh, because it calls game scene set item image bomb and set bombs. Oh, okay. So it just does it manually there. So when we use a flask, we need to update the game scene. No problem. Use flask, unequip. So drink it. Yes! Alright! It worked. We drank a flask. The quantity went from two down to one. Okay, well I think that's going to be it for today's stream. Um, the last little bug here where it displays the flask on the left of there, past the gear menu, that probably has to do with the index. Something like the index is getting decremented too much or something like that. So it shouldn't be too hard to fix. I'll do that after dinner. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be it for today's stream. Thanks a lot for watching. Just been fixing some bugs here. And I got hundreds of more bugs to fix, I'm sure. So, um, thanks a lot for watching. And we'll see you all next time. I appreciate you all for everything. Cheers.